Hey guys, I wanted to have a quick chat about my experiences with Polymega over the weekend. I devoted all of Saturday pretty much to playing Polymega, uh, playing lots of games from the Sega CD, the PlayStation 1, and the Sega Saturn. The machine allows you to play Neo Geo CD games, and I we used to have one in EP, and I can't find it, and I can't find the software that we had. It My game space is, uh, is still kind of a mess. Um, and uh, I, I don't have any Turbo Graphics CD games, but I've got lots of PlayStation 1 games, lots of Saturn games, and a pretty, you know, a handful of Sega CD games. And so I reviewed that Iron Man and Exo Man of War game for the Saturn, had a blast with that. I did the stream where I looked at uh, Neversoft games like Spider-Man and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 and Apocalypse, had a blast with that. I uh, looked at some of the other software, grabbed a couple of other discs as well. But on Saturday, even though I didn't know if I was going to play Polymega all day, that's exactly what happened uh, because it was so addictive. It was so fun to just, you know, keep running into the back room and grab some Saturn discs and then some PlayStation discs and some Sega CD stuff. I checked out Dune. I checked out Road Rash on uh, the Saturn. I played uh, ESPN Extreme Games, which was just this crazy experience. It was kind of like a Road Rash but you were also racing, you know, uh, street losers and mountain bikers and, and uh, inline skaters, and uh, you could punch and kick them and knock them over. Crazy fun. It was a launch title for the PlayStation 1. And I, you know, I just, this isn't the deep dive review because what I want to do, there's a couple things. I want to get all of your questions about Polymega. So please go ahead. If you've got any questions about Polymega, ask them below. I'll definitely throw out questions uh, to, or the, the request for questions to on uh, uh, Twitter and Instagram as well. But, uh, you know, let me know. And so I want to try to get as many of those questions answered from uh, the Polymega folks. And then I'm also going to eventually have uh, Brian Burnell uh, back on Vic's basement. He's the, the founder, the guy that kind of came up with the idea for Polymega. Uh, and we'll dive into a, another interview um, based on a lot of my experiences with this so with this console and the software that I've been able to have so far. And I honestly, I just wanted to come back because I know a lot of people are very curious about this. I, this machine has not launched officially. It's in uh, beta and it's all over the place. There's videos propping up and popping up all over the place. And one of the, th the common things that I see is you know, why don't you just make your own emulation machine? There's so many different ways. You can get a, you know, a tiny little computer and install all kinds of emulators and download all kinds of software, and it'll be less expensive. The base model is 400 bucks US for a machine that will let you play Sega CD, PlayStation 1, Saturn, TurboGrafx CD, and Neo Geo CD discs. Um, and honestly, and the other major thing about Polymega, and the, hence the name, is that you can you can attach modules that will let you play NES games or Famicom games or, or Super Nintendo games or uh, Sega Genesis games, um, and those cost extra, but they allow you to kind of. Uh, extend the power of your machine. There's also going to be a digital storefront. I don't know what's going to be on the storefront. It's not uh, live on my console currently. Um, but there's definitely an idea behind Polymega to make it expandable and extendable. You can also stick in uh, your own storage into the machine and you can uh, store the, the games that you own right on um, the, the storage devices that you have. There's some internal storage, but you can also load a bunch of stuff into uh, an SD card and play everything off of that, which is cool as well. It becomes kind of a repository for your, uh, your, your valuable physical software. And uh, so all of that is swirling around in my mind, and I certainly want to get all of your questions answered, and I know that the Polymega folks would love to answer your questions as well. Um, and, you know, I, I started to think about it, and yes, there are less expensive ways and you can certainly amass a massive collection of software and play pretty much anything that you want to. I have some ethical, you know, dilemmas around that um, for a number of reasons. You know, like I've been covering the video game industry forever, and I know that these people uh, would prefer that, you know, you actually own this software. But I also get that a lot of these companies have done... Uh, the egregious sin of letting a lot of the software just kind of become abandoned and they never think about it and never figure out how to get it back out of the market. There's also all kinds of ridiculous licensing issues around incredible games that means that we, it, will, it will be very difficult to ever see them again, which is crazy, um, which has also made a lot of the cartridges and the CD-ROMs incredibly expensive. And... Um, 
you know, so all of that has been in my mind as I've been sitting there with a huge grin on my face playing these classic games going, oh my God, these developers were so, you know, creative and inventive. They didn't know what the hell they were doing, making the, the awkward transition, you know, especially in the PlayStation 1 and Saturn stuff to uh, move from 2D sprites and, and some awesome, you know, scrolling types of experiences to full 3D experiences, but nobody quite knew how to deal with the camera. Very few developers, especially in the early days, how to deal with cameras and, and movement and stuff. So it's, it's, it's truly an education and it's truly, uh, you know, it's an astounding thing to go back in time like that and play all these games and I've loved all of that but what I kind of kind of concluded as I was sitting there gleefully enjoying this software all day and I've got a lot more gaming to do I can't even remember all the games certainly I played the the Neversoft stuff I loved in the hunt which is this uh, scrolling shoot 'em up but you're in a submarine it's amazing it's just so detailed and I, I somebody posted on my on my social media I posted a picture of it on Instagram and they said that a lot of the developers from in the hunt worked on the metal slug games which is it's evident in the artwork so hyper crystal detailed and amazing reminds me of uh, Jeff Darrow's artwork from the comic industry it's incredible it was crazy to jump into uh, uh, road rash for on the Sega Saturn I think I have the PlayStation 1 disc um, and, and I played a little bit of Dune, which was nuts, based on the David Lynch movie. Uh, I was really, really impressed. And all of the software was working great, whether it came off of the disc. I noticed a couple of quibbles, like the music um, on the Road Rash disc on the Saturn was queuing up a little inconsistently. Uh, I noticed that some of the text in Dune was a little bit out of frame in a couple of spots. Um, I've noticed a couple of things like that, but honestly, I've been incredibly impressed. I must have thrown 30 games so far into Polymega, including Iron Man uh, and Exo Man of War, which I beat the game for the Saturn on the Polymega and reviewed it in side-scrolling superheroes. And it's been working great. And it's been really cool that I can uh, offload the game off the disc and store it right on the hard drive and play it that way, or I can play it right streaming from the disc and have been digging that like crazy. So what I kind of have come away with is that this is not the machine if you are a, um, you know, just a fan of retro gaming, but you you haven't got a collection and, and you're starting to kind of dip your toes in and, and uh, you're sort of exploring this world because you're fascinated with it. Um, and there are lots of ways that you can do that. The retro machines, the little mini consoles, the downloadable solutions like the, the Super Nintendo stuff and the NES stuff that you can get on the Nintendo Switch by becoming an, a Nintendo online customer. Um, there's classic games that you can download on the PlayStation Store and there's classic games that you can download on the Xbox Store. Uh, Neo Geo does a pretty good job of repackaging their content. That mini Turbo Graphics machine that came out earlier this year is phenomenal and it's a great way to get the, the blast of uh, how awesome the turbo graphics systems were um, so there's lots of those out there if you are sort of diving into retro culture and you want to play some of this classic stuff if you are a collector and you have a library the polymega should be something that you pay attention to particularly if you have no aversion to playing software off of emulators and I know that you can get a lot of these emulators uh, in different ways and make your own retro machine if you prefer to do that uh, but the ease of use and uh, the library structure and the little bits of information that comes in, even the cool atmospheric music that you you hear, uh, you know, through the glow of the front end of the Polymega is very inviting, you know, and it's it definitely is captivating if you want to stay in that retro space. But I think the real core customer here is somebody like myself who has and has been keeping a, a massive library of software that they haven't touched in a long time. Now I've got a PlayStation 3 that's hooked up over there and I have thrown in the occasional PlayStation 1 disc to replay it or PlayStation 2 disc to replay it off of that console. But there's something incredible about having an all-in-one machine, you know? And certainly the PlayStation 1 library is the biggest retro library that I have. And I've got all of these gems, all of this classic software that I haven't really gone to uh, that often uh, because I have to kind of wire my PlayStation 3 in, a, in an odd way. The, 
the way that I can just plug in the HDMI into the back of uh, the Poly Mega and I can play my PlayStation stuff that easily. And also, you know, the bonus Sega CD and Sega Saturn stuff. Uh, I've got a pretty sizable Saturn library and I've got a decent uh, Sega CD library. I'm probably not going to be a collector for TurboGrafx CD games and I'm probably not going to collect Neo Geo CD games. They're incredibly expensive. And that's my point here too, right? Like, I would not start out being a retro gamer um, with this machine and then looking on eBay for all of these discs and then the cartridges if you get the other modules because it's pricey, it's expensive and um, uh, that's going to be the, sh the shock. It's not like you can just get this and then you go down to any store and you'll be able to pick up all the best Saturn stuff for five bucks a disc or something like those days are kind of gone when you look on ebay uh the prices are astronomical and there's a lot of software that's like in the hundreds or two hundreds or three or thousand dollars for some of these you know rarer games and it's uh it's freaky um but what i think will really shine the light on and what i really want to talk to the polymega folks about is the kinds of deals that they're putting together for their store and if they're going to be able to um get a really nice collection of titles that people can download to this machine and play them that way and feel like um you know they're paying for it and and it, they're not just finding it you know they're not just sort of getting it there's a lot of that that's going on out there for sure and a lot of it i think is tied to the fact that there's so much abandonware out there and so many crazy license deals around excellent games um, that will never see the light of day again because of the ways that the contracts were structured and stuff which is so heartbreaking um, so, I, this isn't the full review, but I certainly feel like the Polymega was built just for me, you know, for somebody that wants ease of use and can also create content easily off of this. Um, and certainly I, I could have felt justified by just downloading every one of the, the games that I own or, uh, you know, getting copies of it, but I, I didn't want to do that. And so I've never been that person. So, and partially because I've got this this big library of physical media. I've got the games and I've wanted to find an easy way to play them. I've been hounding PlayStation for years to, to uh, you know, get back into being backwards compatible. And I've been applauding Xbox for being so progressive with its backwards compatibility. But here we have the roots of a machine that's, that's multi-layered and, um, you know, conceivably can kick off this revolution of being able to throw all kinds of great software into it and be able to play off of it in an effective way. And it's, it's so elegant and so clean. And honestly, I've been having a total blast. I like the controller. I like the front end. I like the uh, information that gets served up. Um, I've definitely got more Polymega playtime ahead of me and I've got more videos to make around this machine, but I had an epic weekend playing classic games. And uh, that's all thanks to the Polymega. But listen, I want to hear your questions, and I will do my best to get them all answered about the Polymega. So let me know in the comments below things that you are thinking about. You can also tweet at me. I'll probably uh, put out a blast on social media asking for people's questions about this. And yes, I'll have a full deep dive into the machine and I will uh, with a review. And I will also um, get Brian uh, Bernal, the founder of Polymega, back into Vic's basement, and we will talk further about this uh, incredible idea. The Polymega is very cool. Yeah, that's right. 